Now what's what's next? Find Newton Raphson, but what do I need? The inverse of the the inverse of the matrix, right? So we need something to compute the matrix. Okay, so uh, let's code up another function to compute the matrix. So function, let's call dgdx. All right. So dgdx, it should also take x and eta, and it should be compute dgdx of x. So let's take a look at what this function g does and figure out how to compute the derivative of, of this. So g computes these four vectors. And now we want to compute the derivative of the entire g. It should just be the derivative of these four vectors stacked together, right? So let's actually do that. Uh, so instead of uh, instead of coding up additional functions to compute these vectors, let's just uh, uh, let's just uh, have these g a g b g d g uh, g c g d actually compute also the Jacobians. How about that? So so each of them is gonna compute uh, two things here. I don't want it, so I'm just gonna write uh, put a Put a put the same j over here, and because I don't not want to use it. Uh, actually, because that that'll that'll create a twice computation. Let, let's just code up individual individual functions to compute the uh, compute the Jacobians. So let's uh, re change the g's to d g d x. And uh, Let's change the g's to j to denote Jacobian. Let's also call this jx. All right. So let's just uh, compute them as uh, uh, the first one as m by 3m plus 3, and the last one as 3 by 3m plus 3 uh, matrices, so that I can just uh, stack them together into a full matrix. All right. Any questions? Yeah, I think so. That's G and J. Should be J, right? All right. <coughs> so here should be D eight. Uh, okay. The, the function return should be G underscore. Thanks. Okay. Any questions? So the remaining task is to actually uh, code up residual computations right so I'm going to uh, copy the GA into DG DXA so here it'll be DG DXA all right uh, these four lines from 5 to 8 are exactly the same right I still want to extract F FP FPP from the vector X but now instead of computing the GA, I want to compute the J, uh, JX. So what should it be? So, so let's, let's first think what uh, shape does it have? What structure does the matrix have? Let's think a little bit about the matrix. So the matrix uh, partial let's say f g a partial x is going to be how many columns how many rows m plus 1 or I mean how many how many equations does equation a have N, right not n plus 1 because n plus 1 is the number of variables uh, the differential equation doesn't have as many equations as the variables because it needs boundary conditions so so n of these equations how many unknowns how about unknowns n plus 1 
only n plus one, my x is actually three variables, right? Yeah, it's a three n plus three. Okay, and remember we arranged the x into a f f p f p p, right? So this Jacobian also has a structure like that. The first block is the derivative of g a with respect to what? Yeah. Yes. The second block, f p. The third block, f p p. So let's compute them individually. Okay. So the uh, let's say j j f a. That's the derivative of a to f the first block okay so let's first a special uh, specify the sides right by by initializing everything to be zeros so what what is the size of the first block n command m by m plus one right agreed n rows, that's the same for all the blocks. n plus 1 is the number of variables in f. Okay. And now, these two lines should be commanded. If I want to compute the derivative of uh, this jxa, sorry, uh, this uh, jxa with respect, to, with respect to f, what is it? Let's take a chain rule, right? So, uh, let's take a chain rule. So, the only place that depends on f is this product of f and f double prime, right? So, taking the derivative, it's first going to say, okay, every line. Uh, let me let me just copy that down. So, we are going to be computing fpp of i plus 1 minus fpp of i divided by delta eta plus fi plus 1 fpp i plus 1 plus fi fpp of i divided by 2 so the derivative of that to fi and fi plus 1 right so let's look at the ith line it depends only on two locations of f which means it only has two non-zeros, one corresponding to i, one corresponding to i plus one. The ith entry should be, the derivative to the ith entry should be that, right? That's just the taking the derivative of this equation with respect to fi. So this entry should be fpp of i divided by two. How about this entry? The derivative of this value with respect to the i plus one's entry of f uh, of f. Yeah, that's this one, right? That's f p p i plus one divided by two. So, looking this over, not just the i row but all the rows, we see that we are going to get a bidiagonal structure. The lower diagonal and upper diagonal, they are both FPPs, right? But one with entries field from FPP of 1 to FPP of n. The other, the, the second diagonal field with FPP starting from 2 to n plus 1. So that's what I'm going to do here. So F, J, F, A, uh, column 1 to n, right? So that's basically... I'm going to fill this first, except for the last column. Is equal to, uh, is equal to diagonal. I'm going to just uh, put the FPP from 1 to n minus 1 into a diagonal. And then 
the second uh, the second diagonal is J F A column. Sorry, this should be a comma from two to n plus one, right? Is equal to itself because I don't want to overwrite with a bunch of zeros plus another diagonal of the same thing, but starting from two to n. And questions on this? I'm just going to fill these two diagonals. Uh, Two diagonals in the in the matrix. All right. So this is this is the derivative with respect to f. And then if you look at the equation, there is no dependence on f p. Only dependence on f and f p p. So the derivative of uh, of a with respect to f p is just a, a bunch of zeros. So that's it. All right. So now let's work on FPP. There are two dependencies on FPP. So let's first do that. The two dependencies, one on this term and another on that term, right, on, uh, on the second term. On the second term, I would say it's exactly the same as the derivative to F. It, but instead of filling the entries with FPP, I'm going to fill the entries with the corresponding F. Make sense? Just the product between these two. So I'm going to copy what I just uh, had here. And instead of PP, I have F. Make sense? All right. But there is also a different term. The term comes from the finite difference derivative of FPP. That, basically, if you look at the entries, I plus 1, I plus 1, I and I, we're going to see that it corresponds to exactly the same two diagonal entries. The matrix still have the bidiagonal feature, but the entries are going to be modified. So, for example, in the ith entry, my FPP is here and here. So instead of half of FI, I'm going to have half of FI minus 1 over what? Delta eta, right. So. Instead of uh, instead of this, I have minus uh, one over delta eta, and I think I forgot the half at some point. Yeah, this has to be divided by two. This has to be divided by two, right? Divide by two, and also divide by two, and the, the upper diagonal is going to be plus one over delta eta, right? All right, so now I, ha I have the three blocks uh, of this Jacobian. I'm going to assemble them. So Jx of A is going to be uh, Jfa, Jfp. Oh, sorry. Here should be Pp. Uh, Pp, right. Uh, so JFPA and JFPPA. Alright. 